chapter 5, verse 1 through 9, the reading of the word says that after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The important man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool while I am coming another step down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And the word says, And immediately, somebody say, Immediately, the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. On the same day was the Sabbath. For just a few moments, I want to preach to us on the thought of anything is possible in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Anything is possible in the presence of the Lord. Hey, come on, somebody. If you'll lift your hands right now, lift your knees, lift your heart, lift your voice. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Father, we come before you tonight with uplifted hands, with hearts, hurts, and burdens tonight, Father. You see every need. You see every heart. Oh, God, I pray tonight, Father, in your presence, we understand that anything is possible. Immediately, Señor Jesus, you can heal, you can touch. Father, by the name in Jesus, name in Jesus name I claim it I believe it we receive it in Jesus wonderful name we pray let everyone say amen 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 you may be seated in the presence of the Lord this man was sitting by the pool waiting for the exact moment of the troubling of the water you see he was waiting on an angel to step down and to stir that pool pastor But I come tonight to tell you, we don't have to wait on the stirring of the water. We don't have to wait for an angel to step down. Hallelujah. We got the presence of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Holy Ghost is in this house. He's moving from side to side. He's moving from front to back. Hallelujah. He's in this place tonight. You don't have to wait another minute. You can be healed right now in this second. You can receive what you have need of because Jesus is here tonight. Hallelujah. 38 years he waited, sitting there, worried, upset, probably broken. No one was there to put him in the water. I could imagine a few years, that first year passing by, 12 months. I don't know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a guy and I get the sniffles, Pastor. I start to ask my wife for the medicine, the pills. Second day, third day in with that sore throat, I can't take it anymore. This man laid for 38 years with his bed, with his back on that bed. But immediately when Jesus showed up, he said, rise, take up thy bed and walk. He laid on that bed, but that night he walked out with that bed on his back. Hallelujah. Tonight, my brothers and my sisters, I don't know what your prayer request is. I don't know how long you've been praying it. Maybe the enemy is here tonight telling you, you've prayed it before. You can't pray again. You've requested it before, and he's not answering just yet. Hallelujah. But I come to tell you, ask once again. Go before him once again. Seek him once again. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Anything, anything is possible. The word says where the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. Hallelujah. I feel liberty in the house tonight. I feel the joy of the Lord in the house tonight. Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is here. If you're here tonight and you've never been baptized in Jesus' name, this is a great night to repent of your sins, to be washed down in the water. Hallelujah. To be baptized in the only saving name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
If you're here and you've never received the gift of the Holy Ghost, this would be a great night to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You just have to lift your hands and he will fill you with his spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. In Luke chapter 8, four, verse 43, there was a lady with the problem. She had an issue of blood for 12 years. 12 long years. But the word says, but a moment in the presence of the Lord, and she was made whole. Jesus healed her body. Jesus changed her world. Hallelujah. You may be waiting a long time. Maybe you're waiting for a child tonight. Maybe you're waiting on a doctor's report. Hallelujah. But I come tonight to tell you the answer's on the way. Don't believe the report of the medical field. Believe the report of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Sunday in South Bend, Indiana, Pastor pastor sunday south bend indiana we're in his church the music began just like you all started this evening the music started and a man passed away in a wheelchair on the left side of the church he had a stroke gone i thought oh my lord where do we go from here <laughs> the music began to play a lot louder and we gathered around that man in that wheelchair when the EMS got there, they hauled him off to the hospital. Before we were finished in that service, he called the pastor and he said, I'm alive. Yeah. And the pastor said, how is that possible? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> in the presence of the Lord, anything is possible. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We didn't get no, in the ambulance with him, but we prayed, and my God went with him all the way to that hospital. I don't know what exams they ran. They said that he'd had a stroke, and the pastor reported that he shouldn't be talking. He, she had plain speech. He is in his right mind. He said he didn't remember exactly what happened, but he was alive and well. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, have mercy. <laughs> he can do it. He can do it for you. Hallelujah. He did it for that man. He can do it for you. Hallelujah. Praise God. In Costa Rica, it was our third week, and we had an AYC group show up. We were in a packed-out church down by the lake. There was 44 young people, and they were praying and praying over the, the young people of that church and the congregation. I was over here on the side, and I just said, Lord, this is amazing. There's no cultural barrier. There's no language barrier. They're praying for one another. I know they didn't speak the same language i know they didn't understand word for word my brother but they were praying one by one for each and other hallelujah they were in the presence of the lord he was taking care of all the rest he was healing he was touching the lord spoke to me in my spirit and said there's enough power in the house to raise the dead and i looked to the back and i thought oh no who's coming down the pike a baby or a, an elder and it happened to be a young lady in a wheelchair that come rolling all the way to the front. These young people got around her, began to pray with her. We have an aimer down there in Costa Rica. His name's Mike from New York. And, and Mike began to pray with him. And I went to Mike. I said, Brother Mike, I said, the Lord has impressed on me that there's enough faith and enough power in this house to raise this lady, to raise the dead. And so I believe the Lord can raise this lady. So I laid down, I said, Hermana, que piensas? Usted tiene el fe para levantar y caminar. I said, do you think you feel that you have enough faith and that God can raise you, that you can walk? And she said, absolutely. I said, Brother Mike, stretch forth your hand. As he reached forth his hand, she reached out, grabbed a hold, and leaped out of that chair. Hallelujah. <laughs> She didn't take off running past her. She had some weak knees, but she began to take one step by one step of faith. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, that's the God we serve. If he can do it in Costa Rica, he can do it right here in North America. He can do it for you. Hallelujah. When I called back to that pastor, I asked him how she was doing. He said, she's seen around town pushing that chair. <laughs> They asked her, why do you push that chair? And she said, not too long ago, that was me in this chair. Hallelujah. God raised her out of that chair. Hallelujah. Oh, 
I don't know how long you've been in your condition. I don't know how long you've been waiting on your answer. I don't know. I don't know. But I know a God who knows. Maybe it's over a loved one, a, a young man, a young lady in your family. Maybe it's your spouse. Do not give up. Pray for them. You're having 24-hour prayer. Things are going to be in that. Things will begin to happen. You will see answers. You will see a difference. Hallelujah. 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 Anything is possible in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to invite my wife at this time to come and to share in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. My husband is saying that anything is possible in the presence of the Lord. How many of you remember the blind man, Bartimaeus? Yes. When he heard that Jesus Christ was the one passing by, he started to say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy of me. And people tried to stop him and they tried to... Uh, uh, to make him to keep his peace, to be quiet. But he cried there's so much more, the Bible says. And he continued to say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. <laughs> what happened next? The Bible says that he got Jesus' atten attention. And the Bible says that he stopped. And then he called the blind man. And then he asked him, what did he need? And he said, Jesus, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus healed him. You have to get desperate for Jesus. When you are in his presence, nothing stays the same. Things start to change. Doesn't matter the situation in your life. You may be praying for the same thing over and over again. And you may start to get weary. And you may start thinking, oh, this is never going to happen. Or the enemy might try to put things in your mind and say no you don't deserve it no you have gone through far away from God no you're not worthy but that's not who our God is our God is a loving God and he loves you and he cares for you and there is nothing too hard for the Lord thank you Jesus thank you Jesus great things can happen in the presence of the Lord when the enemy tries to attack your mind just remember who our great God is the Bible says that he is the Alpha and he is the Omega. He is the creator and he is the healer. He is the everlasting father. He is the great I am. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. He is the Almighty. He is the great shepherd. He is the Lamb of God. He is the bread of life. He is the Prince of Peace. He is our hope. He is an advocate. He is the righteous one. He is the gate. He's our protector. He's the light of the world. He's the resurrection of the life. He's our deliverer. He's the holy one. He's the way, the truth, and the light. He's our rock. He's the bright and morning star. He's our comforter. He's our forgiver. He's the living water. He's a strong tower. He's a sure foundation. And the most important thing is that he doesn't stop there. He's our savior and he's our redeemer. So that means that he cares for us enough that he cares for our eternal life. So whatever you are, just give your life to God and he can make a way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'd like to finish in closing with a testimony. In Guatemala, there was an 18-year-old uh, girl and one time she was home alone and all of a sudden, she heard an, a knock on the door. She, she went downstairs. She opened a little window that was in that door. And she said, yes, who is this? A man looked at her. And he said, hey, cousin, how are you? He looked at the man and she, he said, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know you. And he said, oh, no problem. Uh, you were too little. But how's your dad, Miguel, and your mom, Ligia, your aunts, your uncle, sisters? And he mentioned everybody uh, with their full name. So after a while, she thought, okay, he has to be family because he knows everybody. And, and then in Guatemala, it started to rain real hard. And she thought, oh, no, if he's part of the family, I don't want him to get wet. So she opened the door in the garage, invited him, and she said, wait right here. I'm going to call my mom and let her know that you're here. So she went running upstairs. And right before she was able to grab the phone, he was standing behind her. And she said, oh, no. He asked for the phone, and he said, may I make a phone call? And she said, yes. He made a phone call, and then he said, I am in. I am in the house. 
She got really nervous at that time. And then when he hung up, he asked for a glass of water. She gave him a glass of water. Then she gave him a second and a third glass of water. When he drank the third glass of water, he put it on the countertop, and then he pulled out a, a drawer where the kitchen knives were. He grabbed one of those knives, and then he said, give me all the valuable things that are in your house, or I'm going to kill you. She got really nervous. She was in shock. She didn't know what to do. So the only things that came out of her mouth were, if you do something to me, you're going to be in trouble because I am a daughter of God. But in that moment, he got so upset and he got so angry because he heard the word God that he grabbed the, the girl by the hair and he started to bash her hair against a concrete wall. Then she fell on the floor and then he started to kick her and punch her and kick her. Then he grabbed the knife. And when he was getting ready to stab her on her throat, she thought, oh, no, I'm here all alone. But if I call on to God, he can make a way. So she started to say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. She grabbed that knife, and God gave her the strength to bend that knife. They continued to struggle, and then he tried to break her neck three times, but she continued to call on to Jesus, and he made a way. Finally, when the man realized he wasn't going to kill, he wasn't going to be able to kill her, he grabbed all the valuables, and he left. She uh, made a phone call. They rushed her to the, the hospital. And when she was laying on the hospital bed, she looked to her right, and right there, there was a tall, big, dark shadow that was just leaning over, looking at her uh, stomach. In that moment, she realized that something had happened to her stomach and that that was the shadow of death. Her dad showed up and she said, Dad, we have to call into the name of Jesus because the shadow of death is right here. But if we call unto God, he can make a way in his presence anything can happen. So they gathered all around that hospital bed and they started to call on to the name of the Lord. The doctor showed up and he said, she's been stabbed 17 times. She's been puncturing her stomach. She's dying. They rushed her out of that room. When they turned right to go to the surgery room, she was still able to sit up a little bit. And she saw when the shadow of death turned into the opposite direction. In that moment, she realized that everything was going to be okay because God was there. It wasn't easy. A month later, uh, she had to go back to the surgery room because a scar tissue had strangled her small intestine. So they had to reopen the same surgery and they had to cut, cut three feet of a small intestine. But God was there. It was dark. It was painful. It was so hard. But she knew that when you call unto God, he makes a way. She continued growing up. She finally got married. And then she wanted a baby. The doctors have told her that there was no way she could have a baby because the scar tissue had gotten a hole for her reproductive, reproductive system. But they continued to believe. Years passed. There was no answer. There was a lot of heartache, a lot of um, miscarriages, a lot of things happened. But one day when she went to bed, uh, she had a dream. And she was holding a pregnancy test, and she saw three um, lines in the pregnancy test. And she told, uh, told, asked the Lord in the dream, Lord, what does the third line mean? And he said, that you are indeed pregnant. The next morning she woke up and she told her husband, I'm going to take a pregnancy test because I think I'm pregnant. She took a pregnancy test and she was pregnant. That, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It wasn't an easy pregnancy when she was a six months pregnant. She started to have some issues. They, and they had to rush her to the hospital because she was having a lot of pain. And when they did some x-rays, they were able to find that she had a diaphragmatic hernia. What had happened is that when she was a staff, a little hole was left in her diaphragm. So when the belly started to grow, the hole started to get bigger, and the baby started to push the intestines down the diaphragm. They had to rush her again. They started to pray again, calling on to God, believing that he could make a way where there seemed to be no way. Doctors told her husband that he had to prepare to leave that room without her and just the baby. But God made a miracle once a way where there seemed to be no way. Church, we're here tonight to encourage you and to 
and, make, and to tell you to trust in God. Doesn't matter the situation, the problem, the pain, whatever you are going through, the heartache, God can make a way where there seems to be no way. And as many as you can maybe have guessed, that girl in the story, it was me when I was 18. And that's the baby that God has given me. So my God can make a way where there seems to be no way. God loves us. He cares for you. He never leaves us and he never forsakes us. Everything is possible when you are in the presence of the Lord. Keep marching forward. Even when things don't make sense. Even when it hurts the most. Keep calling on to the name of Jesus. But Emmaus was blind for a long time. The man suffered 38 years. The women with the issue of blood was sick for 12 years. But they kept calling on to God. And they believed what they were in the presence of God. Things were going to change. So we want to encourage you tonight. Whatever the need might be in your life. Don't give up. Don't get re weary. And keep marching forward in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can we stand to the, our feet all over this house? I don't know what your need is. I don't know what you're waiting on from the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, can we take a moment and come and find a place to pray? We'll come around. We'll pray with you. In Jesus' name, we love you. May God bless you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Come on, folks. Come on. We, this is Wednesday night, but you can still get a hold of God. Hallelujah. He's here for you. Whatever your need is, hallelujah, bring it to the Lord here tonight. He wants to bless you. He wants to touch you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.